originally from um, a small town in central Kentucky. You know, I came to Columbia because I knew that there was something else out there. And I wasn't quite sure what it was, um, but I knew there was something else out there. I wanted to reach out as far as I could while I had the opportunity. There are two things about Columbia that, for me, make it a singular experience and make it a truly amazing institution. The first is the diversity of the institution, that the student body is really a mirror of New York in all of its diversity and all of its intensity. His argument is... The second thing is the small classes with truly outstanding faculty members, where you're getting to share your own thoughts about particular texts or particular issues with someone who's literally the world expert in a field and 12 people within your own age range. And that's an amazing experience. I mean, not only are you in the city that has the most international and global perspective in the world, the, one of the nation's top universities in terms of academics, in terms of professors, in terms of course opportunities. What made me choose Columbia was the dynamics of the city and the dynamics of the program. Columbia was a perfect place to explore all different ideas. Being able to interact with different people and knowing, learning how to apply my engineering education. It's really challenging. You do have to work really hard and you get so much out of it. Um, there's a kind of a real emphasis here on the classics and classical tradition and classical study. The idea that what you're studying has been important, not just in the last 10 years, but for the last 2,000, 3,000 years. And so you're reading Plato's Symposium and you're walking past Butler Library, looking up and you see Plato's name etched in the library, and you think, wow, like I'm really part of something special at this school. It is, in many ways, an institution unlike any other. Founded as King's College on the banks of the Hudson in 1754, it is the fifth oldest institution of higher learning in America and the first in New York City. At one time or another, its faculty and students have included Alexander Hamilton and Theodore Roosevelt, Lou Gehrig and James Cagney, Margaret Mead and Enrico Fermi, Richard Rogers, Lorenz Hart, and Oscar Hammerstein all had a hand in the Varsity Show of 1920. This is a university that is not shy about getting out there in the world. It basically was conceived that way, that it was in the world and that it was going to be involved. Columbia University in the city of New York is rightly named. The two are wedded to one another. The strength of Columbia's fabric has so much to do with the fact that the whole place is a working laboratory for anyone teaching literature, drama, or dance, and in my case, music, too. We're lucky at Columbia. We can, instead of putting paintings on the slides in class, we can go to the Met and actually, you know, get our nose close to the painting and really look at the brush strokes. My internship with the Women's Rights Division of Human Rights Watch. It's actually stationed in the Empire State Building, so I get to take the two down every morning with all the, the financial district, all the lawyers, and, and head down to the Empire State Building and do my internship there. Everybody seems to pass through New York. Everybody comes here, everything's available here, and I feel that way about Columbia, that it's just a mecca, in a way, for the intellectual world. The campus is Morningside Heights, and the campus is New York City. And given our population, and given the way New York is and the way Columbia is, so many people study abroad. So many people come from other parts of the country or in other parts of the world. Your campus really is the entire world. You have a different kind of student body at Columbia, resonating to the energy of the city and to the, the, the rigor of the curriculum. And that's a potent combination. I think that's from my point of view, what, what's different and special about Columbia. <laughs> what do you make of this book? What do you make of the Souls of Black books? I mean, how does it strike you? The core is the center of your Columbia education. It's a range of books, beginning with the Iliad and the Odyssey, through the Greeks, all the way until you get to Virginia Woolf. You know, everything. I mean, it's, it's just a broad spectrum. You leave thinking that you can read anything. You, you literally leave there thinking that there is no piece of literature that you can't master. The core curriculum is really a collection of courses in a variety of disciplines designed to introduce undergraduates to a whole array of 
intellectual activity that we would define as culture. And come back and teach their communities as the enlightened ones. Some of it historical, some of it in the fine arts, some of it literary, and most recently uh, there's been added the science component. All of the classes were woven together in a way that I found fabulous. From the political history, through the literature, through the, the music classes that I took, and the art classes. For me, it just felt like an awakening. A lot of people had, maybe had already studied classics in a private school or had read a lot of the works. I hadn't done any of that. And so for me, it was invaluable. Students are not afraid to think about the things that they talk about in class and take it with them everywhere. The books we're reading, that's what we talk about when we sit around a dinner table or you know, go out for drinks. And I think that's amazing, it's something that I never found anywhere else. I mean, like, you really, like... I think the core is great. It helps you a lot with critical thinking, which is actually really important to an engineer. It really allows you to listen to somebody's argument and really understand what they're saying, see their strong points, see their weak points, and therefore make a better argument at the end. Because we have such a robust liberal arts program, it allows us to uh, integrate our engineering students into the liberal arts curriculum and therefore help them create uh, a special niche for themselves. Right off the bat, there's a course called Gateway Design. You do a design group with four or five other incoming freshman engineers. It's a great introduction to what it means to be an engineer. We have created a very active service learning program. Students uh, learning by doing, by working on projects that uh, are usually focused on the community. It usually has some sort of social good to it. When a child pulls down on this lever, the other end of it will go up. Uh, we want them to consider very carefully the social ramifications of the products that they're developing or the technologies that they're working with. For my senior design project, we worked on a well side unit to remove arsenic from well water in Bangladesh. That's my chemical engineering side. My biomedical engineering side, I've done different tissue engineering products. People get into design mostly because they want to help people. So that's what Columbia allows you to do with your education. The thing that I really like about Columbia academically for the undergraduates is you are introduced to many different subject areas. I thought I would be a political science major, and in my first and second years, I just fell in love with my chemistry courses. As an undergraduate, I did research in the chemistry department, and these are really, you know, the top chemistry professors in the world. So you really get a first-hand introduction to what it would be like to go get a PhD. You get to try on doing a PhD. The, well, the troponin I and C, um, creatinine kinase were normal. I feel that at many of the top research institutions, there is a tension between doing great research and training great people. And I've always felt that at Columbia, it's really the opposite. <laughs> The philosophy is that you're going to do great scholarship by enabling uh, your students to really reach their potential. As an undergrad, I feel like I've received a lot more attention and care, especially in terms of academics, than I would have in any other place. And really at Columbia, I have never been afraid to approach a professor or to voice my opinions about certain things. I've never felt as if, for some reason, as an undergrad, I, my opinion counted for less. Yeah, we're going to be with you in a couple of minutes. I just want to catch Sally. Is she around? In Columbia, the doors are always open. You know, if I want help on structure biology, I go and see Wayne Hendrickson or Eric Guo, and they're graciously discuss my problems with me. People don't have any uh, hesitation about revealing their ignorance if they want to learn something. Uh, it's just a wonderful, open society for exchange of ideas. Come, come to your bench. There's something dynamic, exciting, and open about Columbia that is absolutely unique. Right, we have a piano. It starts off, then it gets up to mezzo piano when the horns come in, and then we build on the bridge to a mezzo forte, maybe a forte, and really swing it, all right? Let's just take it a little faster. One, two, three, four, one. This is the first time I came to America. I came all the way from Nairobi, Kenya. I like Columbia University because it's beautiful. It's grassy, it's tr trees all over the place. 
Columbia is kind of a college town in the middle of Manhattan. You get a feeling that you're actually part of a community that is something different than just New York City, which is great because you end up having both. My parents had a few apprehensions about me uh, coming to college in New York City, and I say that what completely turned it around uh, was the moment that my father stepped onto Columbia's campus with me. I could feel him breathe a, a sigh of relief, and, and then it was okay for their daughter to uh, come from Savannah, Georgia to New York City. <laughs> The campus is really, it's a campus, you know. There are lawns where everybody sits outside and has their lunch. I would say, you know, half of the dormitories are physically located on the campus. You get to meet people from all across the world, totally different perspectives on life, um, and you, you definitely benefit from that. My best friend is from a small town in Alabama. One of my other best friends is actually from the inner city in Boston. And we lived, you know, 20 minutes apart from each other our whole lives, but we didn't meet until we came to Columbia and probably wouldn't have been friends if we met somewhere else because we've been through totally different experiences. I think the greatest thing about Columbia is it's, it's incredibly diverse. On a, on a every, any given day, you'll see students, groups out there doing events. I'd like to welcome you to the fifth annual Columbia Community Outreach. <laughs> And, you know, you really feel like there are multiple communities that also come together um, as Columbia. People find their own little niche. You find out that there are student athletes all over the place. You have your friends that are from your classes, and you have a team, and you have people that know what it's like to go to the gym and juggle practice and literature humanities at the same time, so it's pretty cool. I think that Colombians are proud. Not a, a group of people that's outwardly boastful, but they do believe. Uh, that they're part of something great. And I think there is an awareness that the kind of education you're going to get has a kind of quality to it and a texture to it that you cannot be sure of in other places. And you bring together a great university in a great city. And I think what you have is just something just so remarkable and so wonderful that we're just all just as lucky as we can be to be part of it. I've met here are awesome. I'm definitely going to be friends with them for the rest of my life. There's no doubt in my mind. You meet people who are so exceptional, um, people who are incredibly smart, who are going to do amazing things, and you learn from them. I was awarded a fellowship to do research on Ethiopian politics, actually going into Ethiopia through this special fellowship that Columbia offers, so I'm really excited. I have this dream job, and I promise you I will do it. My dream job is working in the United Nations Joint Logistics Council. That's my, my goal. Columbia doesn't teach you how to be a writer. It doesn't teach you how to be, in my case, an actor, or in the case of Brian De Palma, a filmmaker, Terence McNally, a playwright. What it can do is unlock something. And that's what an education is for. It's to release something inside of you and to make you understand or allow you to understand that you can do pretty much anything that you can imagine.